Hi, welcome to the World Gut Project. My name is Carrie. If you're new here, this channel is usually about managing IBS, uh, well being vegan, or using the low FODMAP diet. And today I want to talk to you about a group of people who might also fall under that category, um, who also experience non infectious GI symptoms, and that's endurance athletes and runners. Up to as many as two thirds of endurance race, racers or runners will experience GI symptoms such as diarrhea and bloating and flatulence loose stools, the sun urge to defecate either during a big race or kind of the days following it. Which is obviously not ideal, you're probably not going to run your best time if you have diarrhoea. Um, so I want to talk about some things you could potentially do. There's a real basic advice of making sure, if possible, you empty your bowels before a big race, you don't drink or consume excessive amounts of caffeine because that's a laxative. If those aren't working, and obviously see your doctor as well because it could be something else if it's happening all the time, um, but you could try eating low FODMAP around the competition. Now the low FODMAP diet, if you haven't heard of it, stands for, it's an acronym, it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and polyols, and it basically involves cutting out or cutting down some of those fibres and sugars which tend to draw water into your gut and be fermented by bacteria in a way that produces lots of gas and it's obviously very painful and these are symptoms. Um, it's a lot to do with the type of bacteria you have in your gut and it isn't an issue for a lot of people. There's lucky people, but for some it is. Ooh, church bells. It's a Sunday. And if you're a vegan runner, you might unwittingly be eating a lot of high FODMAP foods around races. There's a few theories around runner's diarrhea and there's the kind of the physical mechanics of lots of downward pressure and churning as you run. There's also the fact that endurance racing when you really push yourself does change your immune system a little bit so then the bacteria in your gut can change which could mean you are temporarily sensitive to these FODMAPs. And then last year there was a preliminary study so it was really small numbers I think it was yeah 11 people so we're not going to go crazy on this. Uh, but they basically divided this group of endurance runners into high FODMAP and low FODMAP diets. The people who were eating low FODMAP experienced less diarrhea, less loose stools, less kind of urge to defecate um, and less flatulence, like following big races, which is obviously a, a positive outcome. It didn't have any impact during the race, which isn't fantastic, but it does seem like a promising way to manage the symptoms, especially if you're going to be doing several running events. Now if you don't have IBS, you really don't need to do the whole low FODMAP protocol at all. You could just cut down on a few kind of classic high FODMAP foods around a race, make a few swaps, and it could really help reduce the following symptoms. So the first thing you can do is have less beans and instead have tofu because the low FODMAP portion of tofu is pretty big, it's 160 grams, um, so that's an easy swap. And then if you're carb loading before a big race, instead of having wheat-based carbs, have potato or rice because those are FODMAP free and you could, you could eat tons of potatoes and it's unlikely to cause IBS for you. You'll also want to ditch onion and garlic, which are an issue for a lot of people even if they don't have IBS actually, but you can swap it for the dark green section of leeks or spring onions or use garlic infused olive oil for the same flavour. And then you'll also want to avoid really high fructose fruits such as um, mangoes and also energy drinks which are really high in fructose like um, high fructose corn syrup that could also be triggering your symptoms. Altogether those little swaps could actually have quite a big difference and help you enjoy running and not the runs. Great fun. If IBS is a big issue for you in general it might be worth exploring the low FODMAP diet. Obviously get medical advice to your doctor etc first. Um, subscribe and like if you thought this was interesting or helpful and I'll see you in a couple of weeks with another video. Bye.